Today we're going over the drops that you get from Glurge and whether or not they're worth it. Hopefully you know by now and realise that you can go ahead and resummon the bosses. All you've got to do is go ahead and talk to the second NPC that you'll get after defeating obviously the second boss. And you can go ahead and buy these summoning idols. They're pretty expensive at 500 each. And if you actually find the NPC first before defeating the second boss, which can actually happen, you'll find them out in the wild, then you can go ahead and just simply buy the first one. And that's what we're going to focus on today, the drops. Obviously, to get that many credits, you should be selling all of the items that you get, the special stuff that you find. But once you get to the stage of mining maybe lots of ores, you can make thousands simply by selling just a couple hundred of red scarlet, as I'm showing off here. Now for this first boss, there is also the method of farming bosses on other worlds. Simply literally go to another world, making sure you label it correctly so you know you're not going to be revisiting something you don't want to have to go to. And because Galurch pretty much always spawns in one direction or another pretty close to the core, it shouldn't be too hard to find him. You usually find Glurch anywhere between sort of 50 and maybe 100 blocks in one direction or another. And so with more advanced digging gear, it shouldn't be too hard to find him. A safe bet is to dig directly north, south, east and west and then look out and hear for the FUD of Glurch jumping around. And again, since you're maybe a bit more advanced now, you should be able to go ahead and take Glurch out pretty easily. Once he's defeated, obviously you can go ahead and loot anything he's got inside as well as keep the chest and simply move on to the next world. The loot that you get is random and there is supposedly percentage drops based on how many times you've done it. But you can see I got a pretty decent ring there, one of the two sets on set that gives you extra range damage. Now that may seem a bit too cheesy for you, if you do just want to do it the actual official proper way, then you go ahead and like I said, keep selling, get more credits and just placing it on the summoning stone. And this becomes a bit harder doing that method when you go and face off against the next bosses. Although again, it still might be a bit easier if you've got good pickaxes and good armor and weapons anyway. But as you saw there, once you've got the drop, just put it down on the spot and you'll be able to go ahead and summon the bosses again. And that works for all of them. I'm kind of hoping that in the future they make each summon a little bit more difficult. I think that would add a bit more challenge to this method and give you a bit more of a challenge obviously taking them on. All in all, I've done this around maybe eight or nine times and I have got or managed to get all the items bar the figurine that you get from Glurge. It does mean that you'd also get plenty of chests and you can go ahead and sell a lot of the stuff that you get that you might not have uses. You won't make all the credits back, but it's a start in getting some of them. The actual boss drops themselves that you power the cores with, you can't sell, which is kind of a shame, but you can sell the NPC items that you need to place in the rooms. And so you can make at least a little contribution back, especially if you do go ahead and sell maybe the slime and any of the other smaller drops that you've got as well. It takes around 15 to 20 minutes for these to usually respawn. And that's pretty much how you farm them. And so these are the drops that you can get from re-rolling them. There are random chances of doing this and depending where you look, you'll get conflicting information about percentage chances. But you're always guaranteed to get the slime and the glurch eye. Then after that, you always get some sort of slime and you can get anywhere between 10 and maybe even 30 or 40 slime. Then you're lucky you might get a few gems or mechanical parts. In fact, it looks like you're more likely to get gems than you are mechanical parts, and you're more likely to also get the feather than you are possibly mechanical parts. But literally only by a few percentage, judging by the couple places I've looked at with the wikis and on Reddit. Absolutely though, the rarest thing I've found so far has been the shield and the actual blob ring. In fact, the shield is probably one of the rarest items. I've only come across that once in nine times, but I have managed to get two necklaces now and two rings. The necklace and rings will give you a better boost to your range damage, with the ring giving you an extra dodge chance and the necklace giving you extra health on their own. But wear both the necklace and the ring and you will increase your range damage completely, up to 13.1%. With it equipped, I was doing anywhere between sort of 209 damage to 237 damage, give or take a few critical hits. But when I removed them, I was maybe doing anywhere between 190 and 220 damage. So obviously a small increase, but nevertheless pretty good, especially still even when you go into late game against maybe the mold biome and some of the enemies there. I don't know if you've noticed this as well, but if you actually shoot at enemies from too far away, 
it doesn't actually kill them. It, numbers will pop up like you're doing damage, but they seem invincible. You actually need the enemies to aggro on you or be close enough that you can actually do the damage like this. But for sure, in other parts while exploring, if the enemies have been way across the water, I just simply haven't been able to kill them because either they replay their health or you don't actually do true damage because they're too far away. They do stand a chance of getting some of the other items randomly as well from drops, like the shield and obviously the feather, which gives you a quick speed boost when you press the B button using a controller. So if you are farming the bosses, I would say carry on until you get the two rings. But after that, don't bother trying to farm a shield or farm the other stuff, as you can pretty much go ahead and buy it or find it quite a lot of them. If you're still on the stages having trouble defeating, obviously, Glurch, then what are you watching this video for? Go and check out my starter guide to taking him on, and I'll show you how to defeat him pretty quickly. But it's a case of just hitting him once or twice, and then when he goes into rage mode, only hitting him once and just moving out of the way. It's not that hard a boss fight. I don't feel you need to set up a hundred of the traps with spikes on the floor. Not unless some reason you're really, really bad at moving and hitting at the same time. If you are, then go ahead and use ranged weapons on them. But do remember that if he starts heading back towards his circle, he will start generating more health, sometimes almost completely by the time he gets back there or when he hits the actual circle itself. You can kind of cheesily use him to also go ahead and mine lots of resources for you, although most of it is, of course, dirt and maybe, if you're lucky, some clay. For sure, it's a shame he's not somewhere like the stone biome, as that would be great, getting lots of stone quick and easy, or even some of the more harder materials. But there we go. In my opinion, it's very rare to get the shield and obviously the glitch figurine, which I haven't got just yet. But as soon as you do get the two ring and necklace set, that's when you need to stop farming him. As the rewards for doing so probably just aren't really worth it unless you are going to desperately need more coins and you want to sell it. If you found this useful, check out the rest of the guides. I'm going to be doing the same farming guide for all the drops for all the bosses. And until next time, Rat Bags, I'll catch you later.